some of the temples of South India which belong to earlier centuries, one finds sculptures such as these. These gestures are part of a highly systematized language of mime and dance and music, which goes back to antiquity. The language is described in a remarkable Sanskrit work written in the 4th century. The Natya Shastra by the sage Bharata deals with drama. One of its 27 chapters is devoted to the dance, which formed an inseparable part of classical drama. The form of stage described in the Natya Shastra is a thing of the past. But some of the dance forms, which grew out of the classical theatre, have taken roots and survived in different parts of India. One of these, belonging to Tamil Nadu, preserves the name of the writer of the treatise. It's interesting to observe that the three syllables of Bharata's name form the initial syllables of the three principal elements of the dance form. Bhava, or feeling, is conveyed through mime. Raga, through music. Tala, or rhythm, through dancing. Part of the language of Bharatanatyam consists in mudras, or symbols formed by the hand. This, for instance, is the Mayura, or peacock mudra. But it can also stand for other things, such as writing, or marriage, where the dancer goes through the movements of tying the marriage cord, or it can stand for thinking, or the concept of truth, or listening, swan, ornament, And finally, the tilaka mark on the forehead. Through you, a message I sent him. What happened, my friend? The truth. Tell me, dear friend. <laughs> The concept achieves fullness with the addition of song and mime. A great dancer can sing the same phrase over and over again, heightening the feeling, discovering new shades of meaning in the text, and varying the gestures to echo the changes in the melody. This use of song and mime to embellish a literary text is only one of the items in the rich repertoire of Bharatanatyam. To achieve mastery over this repertoire calls for a combination of skill, energy, devotion and innate musical sensibility which few dancers can claim. Fortunately, in our own lifetime, such mastery has been achieved by a dancer whose name has become synonymous with Bharatanatyam. Bala Saraswati is 59 now and still dances. She says she'll retire when she feels the time has come to do so. Just now, aided by her daughter Lakshmi, she's getting ready to perform a Varnam. Varnam uses the whole range of a dancer's equipment, from the subtlest mime to the most intricate and vigorous of pure dancing. Bala has literally been dancing all her life. 
She was only seven when she faced an audience for the first time in the courtyard of a small temple in Kanchipuram, 50 miles from Madras. The person responsible for this extraordinary debut was Bala's dance teacher, Kandappa Pillai. It was Kandappa's ancestors who, in the 19th century, gave Bharatanatyam the shape and form in which it has come down to us. There were musicians in the court of Tanjore, which was famous for its patronage of the arts. In the same Tanjore court, 200 years ago, was a dancer named Papammal. Little is known of Papammal's ancestry, but we know that she stands at the top of a family tree, which has brought forth outstanding musicians in every generation. Dhanam, who came five generations after Papammal, was the finest veena player of her time. She also sang, and it was she who insisted that her granddaughter Bala should train to become a singer. But Bala, at the age of two, had already seen the greatest temple dancer of her time, and her ambition was to surpass her. In those days, dancing as a profession meant dancing in temples. And temple dances were frowned upon by polite society. It was Bala's mother Jayamma, herself a fine singer, who decided to brave the social risk and fixed up Kandappa to teach her daughter. Bala recalls the routine of her early training. Daily I have to get up six o'clock and then I'm going to I start my music till 11, 30, 9.30. Then I go to my guru's house. I'll dance one o'clock, one o'clock, 12.30, like that. Then I come back and I'll take rest a little while. And then some reading. I'll read some books. And then uh, after four o'clock, he'll come again. And again my routine work will start. The relentless training added to an inborn musical talent bore fruit. While still in her early teens, Bala caught the eye of connoisseurs. When she was young, I have been uh, watching her from her young days. In those days, her dance was marvelous. And her teacher, Kandapa, was himself a genius. And he had a gift for pruning and uh, removing all crudities and unnecessary repetitions. And all, and, uh, all that she has uh, been doing in a wonderful way in the younger days. Later, of course, she has been concentrating more on the Abhiraya portion. But it, those who have seen her in the younger days can still recall how beautiful her dances themselves. In 1935, Bala came to Calcutta to dance in a conference of classical music. In town at that time was the famous dancer and choreographer Uday Shankar. She danced for me. I thought she was super. Her movement was such flowing movement, not like any other uh, Bharatanatyam dancers I have seen. She was really wonderful. Bala acknowledges that it was Uday Shankar who spread the word and paved the way for her career. Soon, Bala was giving recitals in all the major cities of India. The intrinsic beauty of the art form and Bala's own consummate artistry and her steadfast refusal to pander to popular taste put her in a class by herself. Added to the tradition and the richness and the musical um, accompaniment, there is also the personal genius of Bala, which gives uh, another dimension to the uniqueness of her art. She is undoubtedly a genius in the interim songs in the Abhinaya. One of the most beautiful pieces in Bala's repertoire one which displays both her mime and singing, is a song about the childhood of Lord Krishna. Krishna has strayed from home, and Mother Yashoda implores him to come back.
biggest triumph in the West was at the Festival of Arts in Edinburgh in 1963. 1963 was a kind of Indian year at the Edinburgh Festival. A lot of our great musicians were there, Ravi Shankar, Mali Akbar, Subhalakshmi, various other interesting Indian uh, things, and of course eight solo recitals by Bala Saraswati. All were sold out. And as word got round about the quality of her dancing, Requests for seats came pouring in. Reception was, I would say, almost rapturous. It wasn't just a case of rave reviews. Those were there, of course. 
But there was a feeling in the minds of those who saw her, even those who saw her for the first time, of being in the presence of greatness, as it were. I remember one evening, Martha Graham was sitting in the front row, so overcome with emotion that she couldn't hold back her tears. The impact of Bala's art on the West was strong enough to lead to teaching engagements in American universities. Bharatanatyam had indeed come a long way from its home in the temples of South India. In her own country, Bala's lifelong devotion to the cause of Bharatanatyam has won wide recognition. The Academy of Music in Madras, where Bala gives dancing lessons, has conferred on her their highest distinction. Outside of her work and her concert tours, Bala leads a quiet life in her home in Madras. Her two brothers, Ranganathan and Vishwanathan, are home on vacation from the United States, where they teach South Indian music. Ranga teaches drumming, while Vishwa teaches the flute and singing. <laughs> Daughter Lakshmi, taking daily lessons from Bala, carries on the family tradition. The musicians who will accompany Bala for her performance of the Varnam include Vishwanathan playing the flute, Tyagarajan, the violinist, the dance conductor Ramaya, singer Ramadas, and Kupuswami, the drummer, who has been Bala's accompanist for more than 40 years. The text of this particular Varnam describes a young girl's complaint to the Lord Shiva. I am stricken with love for you, she says. How can you be so indifferent? She is, in fact, the lover and the devotee at one and the same time. Bala is unsurpassed in her handling of this delicate combination. The last things that the dancer puts on before a performance are the anklets. This is the same pair which Bala wore for her debut more than 50 years ago.